We also have an implicit function theorem if we have a situation where we have multiple exogenous variables. The easiest example where that happens is we have x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 1. We know exactly when we have our exogenous variables here, right? And as in last time, we just really need to have information about the partials to really tell us exactly when uh, we can have an exogenous variable. So I'm going to compute dg dz of x, y, uh, z. That's equal to 2z. Uh, and we're going to look at the point. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and look at the point 1. Uh, or say 0, 0, 1. Let's put, look at that point. And of course that point is there. dg dz of x, y1 of z is equal to z, 2z. And therefore at 0, 0, 1, this is equal to 2, which does not equal 0. Right? And if we think of x and y fixed, then we've essentially satisfied our in implicit function theorem uh, restrictions. So then we're going to have, so since dg dz of 0, 0, 1 does not equal 0, uh, there is z of x, y, such that z of 0, 0 is equal to 1. We have that x squared plus y squared plus z of x, y squared is always equal to 1. And also we'll have that dz dx evaluated at xy is going to be equal to negative dg dx over dg dz which is going to be equal to well, normally, so dg dx is 2x, and this will be 2z, so we have negative 2x over 2, but now z is a function of x and y. And so when we plug that in, we'll just have negative x over z of x, y. So as long as this z of x, y is not zero, this is well defined and everything's good. And similarly, we can do the same thing for y. We can compute dz dy in the same manner. And so this gives us the more general theorem. So this is a more general implicit function theorem where now I have multiple exogenous variables. So suppose g of x1 all the way up to xn y is c1 so it's a continuous function around a point as well and x1 star x2 star xn star y star satisfies g of x1 star xn star y star is equal to some constant so we fix some level set so here the level set was a sphere this could be anything uh, if dg dy evaluated at x1 star xn star 
y star does not equal zero, right? So this is a sufficient condition, right? So it was a necessary condition if the thing did exist. Now this is a sufficient condition. If this is true, uh, then there is a differentiable function defined around x1 star, so this point, up to xn star, and we'll call that function y of x1 up to xn. So for any x1 up to xn around x1 up to xn star, this thing is defined, and it satisfies a, the first thing it satisfies is that y of x1 star, x2 star, up to xn star is equal to y star. So it agrees with that point. So if I compute it, I get that point back. B, we have that g of x1, x2, all the way up to xn. And we plug in this y function into the last value, x1 up to xn. So now this is just dependent upon the x's. Well, that's always going to be equal to c. So y solves is the implicit function for this constraint. And then part c, we have, well, dy dx i, the partial derivative, is equal to negative dg dx i divided by dg dy. And that and we'll see more implicit function theorems, but this is the basic idea.